Lord be with you. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to St. Mary's here in Bunclody for our service of morning prayer, which can be found on page 101 in the Book of Common Prayer. And on this, the fourth Sunday in Easter, we also remember Jesus, the Good Shepherd. This is Good Shepherd Sunday, and we will hear readings by Farah Jacob and Emily Rothwell, both from sixth class in Carrigduff National School. You may indeed have seen the picture there from Carrigduff National School of some young shepherds looking after Kevin, the newly born lamb. And there are many lambs to be seen if we had a very good camera on the slopes behind me of, Kil of Barnahask and Kilbranish and all the way up to Mount Leinster. But before that, let us sing a hymn. Hymn 52 in the church hymnal. And to help us in that, we have uh, a great choir member from St. Columbus Church in Tullow, Mr. Donald Studdard, whose father was a rector there some years ago. And Donny is now a resident in Ardeveen nursing home, just at the other end of the town. And so we listened to and sing, hopefully, if you have the words from the hymn book, Christ whose glory fills the sky, Christ the one and only true light. <laughs> Christ whose glory fills the skies, Christ the true, the only light. Sun of righteousness arise, triumph for the shades of night. Day spring from on high be near, day star in my heart appear. Dark and cheerless is the morn, unaccompanied by thee. Joyless is the day's return, till thy mercy's beams I see, till the inward light impart, glad my eyes and warm my heart. Visit in this soul of mine, pierce the gloom of sin and grief. Fill me radiancy divine, scattered all my unbelief. More and more thy self display, shining to the perfect day. Thank you. So thank you to Donny and all in our Deving nursing home. We continue our worship on page 101 in the Book of Common Prayer. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Well, let us now praise the Lord with a, a canticle which is now uh, also sung as a hymn. And it's the hymn Jubilate, based on Psalm 100. Jubilate, everybody serve the Lord in all your ways and come before his presence singing enter now his courts with praise for the Lord our God is gracious and his mercy everlasting jubilate 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 day jubilate everybody serve the Lord in all your ways and come before his presence singing enter now his courts with praise for the Lord our God is gracious and his mercy everlasting jubilate 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 day Now our Old Testament reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel will be read by Ms. Farah Jacob from 6th class in Carrickduff National School. A reading from Ezekiel chapter 34 verses 1 to 10. The word of the Lord came to me. Mortal, prophecy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophecy and say to them, to the shepherds. Thus says the Lord God, Ah, you shepherds of Israel who have been feeding yourselves, should not shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat, you clothe yourselves with the wool, you slaughter the fatlings, but you do not feed the sheep. You have not strengthened the weak, you have not healed the sick, you have not bound up the injured, you have not brought back the strayed, you have not sought the lost, but with force and harshness, harshness you have ruled them. So they were scattered, because there was no shepherd. And scattered, they became food for all the wild animals. My sheep were scattered, they wandered over all the mountains, and on every high hill. My sheep were scattered over all the face of the earth, with no one to seech, search or seek them for them. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, says the Lord God, because my sheep have become a prey, and my sheep have become food for all the wild animals, since there was no shepherd, and because my shepherds have not searched for my sheep. But the shepherds have fed themselves, and have not fed my sheep. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, I am against the shepherds, and I will demand my sheep at their hand, and put a stop for, to their feeding the sheep. No longer shall the shepherds feed themselves. I will rescue my sheep from their mouths, so they may not be food for them. The appointed psalm for this Good Shepherd Sunday is Psalm 23, probably the best known psalm in the Bible. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down by green pastures. He leads me by quiet waters. He restores my soul. He leads me along paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You lay a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And now we hear our New Testament reading from the Gospel of John, read by Ms Emily Rothwell from Sixth Class in Carrickduff National School. Second reading. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Chapter 10, verses 11 to 18. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know my own and my own know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also. And they will also listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. For this reason, the father loves me because I lay down my life in according to taking up it, take it up it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay down my life from, and but I lay down my life from my own accord. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. I have received this command from my father. Thank you, Emily. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Well, on this Good Shepherd Sunday we get a very clear sense of what Jesus is like in terms of his care for each one of us. And throughout the Bible, Jesus uses many images to describe what it is to be the Messiah, God coming to earth to be with us. And he calls himself the, the living water, the bread of life, uh, the light of the world, and the rock. Uh, all of these are somewhat abstract images but when it comes to being a shepherd certainly in this Bonclody Union of Parishes uh, there's a great familiarity with what that entails um, certainly during the lambing season the idea that one has to be available 24-7 um, sometimes through the night uh, sometimes sleeping as Willie Levingston I know used to do um, with the animals just to care for those that may, may have needed extra attention. And, and so when Jesus talks about being the Good Shepherd, we understand a little bit about that. But the original Greek in the Gospel of John, when it was first written, uses the word kalos for good, which means a lot more than good. It means uh, beautiful as well, uh, for example. So we get a sense that Jesus, who promises in John chapter 10, verse 10, just before the passage which Emily read, we have a beautiful line that Jesus says, I came that you might have life and have it to the full, or have it abundantly in some translations. And that fullness of life, that life that's bursting with the goodness of being alive, uh, that is what Jesus brings. And that is what is meant when we talk about the Good Shepherd. But after that verse, John 10, 10, Jesus goes on to tell that story that Emily read for us. And that story has four important characters. You have the Good Shepherd. You have the sheep. You have the hired hand. And you have the wolf. Now Jesus doesn't tell stories just to pass the time. They have a meaning and sometimes they have layers of meaning and the same is the case here with this story because for example if I was to ask who do you think the Good Shepherd is you probably would say well that's Jesus of course and you'd be right but 
As with many of the stories and parables that Jesus tells, there is more than one meaning. And we might also ask ourselves, because Jesus asks us to be like him, are we good shepherds? What are we um, shepherding? Um, and in Psalm 23 that we heard, we have an idea about what it means to be a good shepherd. One who leads and guides. One who revives the soul. One who protects. A rod and a staff in the case of Psalm 23. One who nourishes. He laid a table before me in the presence of my enemies. One who shelters, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So, in all of those ways, we can be more like Jesus by being like a good shepherd. And who are the sheep? Well, you might think the sheep are you and me. The sheep that the good shepherd looks after and cares for and loves. And that's true. But beyond sheep as a literal animals, Jesus talks about the sheep as being things that are precious to us. For example, it could be a relationship that's very precious to us that we need to nurture and need to think about and need to be closely involved with. Uh, it could be by being a good son or a daughter, a good uh, partner. Um, and that's a precious thing. And, and there are many other types of precious elements like friendships or caring roles or things that are precious in our society. This good earth, in a way, is like the sheep that are being looked after and that we as good shepherds need to look after as well. And then there's the hired hand. So, who might the hired hand be? Well, I suppose we can relate to people who have maybe uh, tried to exploit a situation and run away and not care about the consequences. And maybe it's somebody who was in trouble and the person they were depending on just walked out, left them, ran away, didn't help. And the question, I suppose, for me, and I have to ask, and these sometimes are hard questions, have I been a hired hand in somebody else's life? Have I been able to help, but didn't? Maybe it was too much trouble. Did I pass somebody who had, uh, had a puncture and didn't stop? Or was I being suspicious? Um, you know, what was my role in, in that person's life? Um, and we have to be wary all the time, but there are times when we have to ask ourselves, am I being the hired hand here? Could I have helped? And then there's the wolf. Well, of course, since 1786, and in fact, on those hills, the slopes of Mount Leinster, the last native wolf was killed in Ireland. Just 10 years after this church here in St. Mary's was built. So we're not talking about literally wolves in this story here today. But what are the wolves that have maybe be in our lives that have pulled us down, that have caused us not to live life to the full, uh, th that have attacked us in, in ways that we have um, been suffering? Uh, and and th 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 those are real issues that we need to look at. And it's not just talking about other people who may attack us. There are issues in our own lives. For example, the busyness of life uh, that stops us from maybe having the time for the relationships that are important. Um, there's the need for approval. Uh, the way that we, we don't just live in the moment, but we are constantly craving approval craving uh, uh, compliments um, you know that that's an element that stops us from appreciating life right now as it is and then there's the need to be right all the time in conversations you ever come across that where you feel the need to have the last word and and um, I, I've fallen into that trap so many times 
and the fear of failure that's something that can maybe keep people awake at night certainly stops us from living life to the full and feelings of despair and that's so understandable in this pandemic but you know they do stop us from enjoying the moment we are in and so all of those are like wolves in our lives and we, we have to protect ourselves from those things that pull us down so in summary we have the shepherd and the sheep two wonderful parts of the story that point to the abundance of life in Jesus Christ and then on the other hand we have the hired hand and the wolf pointing to a life when that abundance of life is lost or forgotten so with those four images we have an invitation from Jesus to look at our own lives and then choose life choose life that can be lived through Jesus enjoyed and lived to the full because Jesus carries those heavy burdens and wants us to enjoy life and what can be done to keep the wolf from the door well one thing certainly is to answer this question will you this day walk with the Good Shepherd walk with Jesus Christ for it is in Jesus the Good Shepherd who wants us to choose life to choose to live in his company as he said in John 10 I come that you may have life and have it to the full Amen so as we reflect on the story of the Good Shepherd let us now sing that beautiful hymn by Graeme Townend written based on Psalm 23 as we reflect on Jesus as the Good Shepherd The Lord's my shepherd I'll not want He makes me lie in pastures green He leads me by the still, still waters His goodness restores my soul And I will trust in you alone and I will trust in you alone For your endless mercy follows me Your goodness will lead me home He guides my ways in righteousness And he anoints my head with oil And my cup it overflows with joy I feast on his pure delights And I will trust in you alone And I will trust in you alone For your endless mercy follows me Your goodness will lead me home And though I walk the darkest path I will not fear the evil one For you are with me and your rod and staff Are the comfort I need to know And I will trust in you alone And I will trust in you alone For your endless mercy follows me your goodness will lead me home. Let us proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers, and grant our government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and renew us by your Holy Spirit. And the Collect for this, the fourth Sunday in Easter. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom. Defend us in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we ask you to hear the prayers we offer in faith. May we grow more like you, Lord Jesus, our Good Shepherd. Help us to be a good shepherd for others and for all that makes for a loving and full life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the Church of Christ, that we may follow Christ's commandment that we shall be one flock and have one shepherd. Help us to join with other Christians as good shepherds, following the example of our one and only divine good shepherd. Take away any temptation to sow division. And may we not be wolves in sheep's clothing, scattering the flock. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all the good shepherds in this community. Those who nurture the soil, care for livestock, produce the food on which we depend. Bless also the good shepherds who care for other sheep, all your people, especially the sick. We especially pray that Gertie Earl and Mabel Brownrigg will be able to get home from hospital soon. Lord, bless all who have health problems. Bless them with your healing, with your comfort and with your strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we give you thanks, Lord, for the precious memories of those we love but see no more. We commend each one to the loving care of your closer presence as they rest in your peace, in certain hope of the glorious resurrection. 
through the saving grace of our risen Lord, we conclude with the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. To God, who by the power at work within us is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, to him be glory in the Church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, for ever and ever. Amen. God the Father, by whose glory Jesus Christ, our Good Shepherd, was raised from the dead, raise you up to walk with him in the newness of his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you and with all those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Let us go in the peace of the risen Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.